Where are you going? Lord, you're the prettiest thing I ever saw. What's your name? He's Harry Tracy, the desperado. But the Reddy's killed 20 men. Well, that's not right, man. As far as I can count, there's only, uh, one, two, eight. Oh. Oh. I'm Mari. You ain't mad, are you? Hold it. I'm the sheriff here, and this man's my prisoner. Just who the hell are you, anyway? I'm Maury Nathan, United States Marshal out of Utah. You should have been expecting me. I come to take this man back to the penitentiary. That's good I come by when I did, or he wouldn't be anybody's prisoner. How would he? Hey, no pictures. No pictures! Get that thing out of here. Hold on now, Maury. Let's just wait one minute. You shouldn't be taking all the credit for this. If I hadn't have stolen a horse, it would be damn dumb. He admits it now, you hear? Now, if I'd have had my rifle... Any man to steal on Christmas Eve, he ain't got no decency, and it should be strung up pretty you damn You are quick. arguing about hanging me, and it's Christmas... Shut up, Harry, or else. I said, he's my prisoner. Boys, don't stop now. You let him break out. He got out of your penitentiary first. I could have had him in North Dakota. Show me your warrant, boy. What'd you say your name was? She's Catherine. I'm her sister, Judy. We're from Portland. That's in Oregon. Portland. Well, way out there. You know what I always wanted to do? I always wanted to get me on a boat and go for a ride on the ocean. You ever been on the ocean? Pete, man's a primitive. I bet he eats babies. Well, it's only because they're so tender, ma'am. Don't fret none. They was just engine babies. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do next time I break out? I'm going to come see you, Kate, in Portland, Oregon. That's come, true. Come on. <laughs> Look at here, Tracy. Look at here. Oh. Here's your ugly puss right in the front page. Picture here of you and that young wench. It says Catherine Tuttle, daughter of recently deceased federal court judge Benjamin Tuttle, Portland, Oregon, was instrumental in the apprehension of famed outlaw Harry Tracy. It's the newspaper people. Reporters, I don't know how they do it, but every single time they get there. Let me see it for you. This Catherine Tuttle now, she's much too fine for the likes of you. Come on, let me see it. Judge's daughter. Ain't that pathetic? Are you the one? Are you responsible for this? Yeah, but, but miss, that picture, your picture, will be on the front page of papers from New York to San Francisco. Most folks just tickle to death to get the picture in the paper. Well, I am not one of them. Besides, I had no more to do with apprehending him than you did. It's all lies. You call him a mad dog killer. Yet when he could have harmed us, he did nothing. He could have taken us hostage or raped us. Why didn't you get a picture of that marshal trying to crack a defenseless man over the head instead of this? But, miss, I can't take pictures while people are moving. No, 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 no. That's quite enough squabbling. My daughter is quite capable of making up her own mind, and I'm afraid you'll just have to abide by her decision. Pure shame, ma'am. I mean, everyone can see how Tracy was real taken with her. Now, your daughter could become a celebrity practically overnight. I mean to say, we all know how outlaws get even more famous once they're dead. What do you mean, dead? Tracy wasn't that severely injured. And besides, they're taking him to prison, not to the gallows. Well, if that marshal has his way, I reckon Tracy won't make it back to prison this time. Supposedly, he caused trouble again, and now they got him staked out behind the jail in his long underwear. Another hour, he'll be froze to death. They can't do that. No, they can't. Be 
easy, Mother. Lady, just who the hell are you? Could it be that I know the law better than you do, Sheriff? This is a criminal act for which you could be jailed. Now, you get this man unshackled and inside before he perishes. The marshal's doing, ma'am. Not mine. Him being federal marshal and all, though, that means he's got more authority than I do. And, well, it uh, means he's got the keys, too. I see. Well, where is this marshal, then? <laughs> what the hell? We haven't time for pleasantries, marshal. If you don't come and take your prisoner inside, you'll have his murder on your hands. And I can assure you, I will press the charges myself. And who the devil are you to be telling me what to do? I am the widow of a federal court judge. And as such, I still know who to go to in order to have your hide. We could start with the governor, if you wish. Ma'am, I sure want to thank you for all you've done for me. I won't forget you. I think perhaps it might be best if it is. What in the hell's the matter with you? Can't you even take your hat off for a lady? I don't never take my hat off. And sure enough, for some soft-hearted meddling woman.
Casey. Don't go falling asleep in there. boys watching the horses they even got guns i got every reason to blow you to kingdom come maury but i never shot a man yet wasn't defending himself and i ain't about to start right now now you got off here i guess that means this is your stop now turn around single file and start walking follow you it's a long way to utah maury single file that way go on keep going right behind him Start trotting. Trot. Don't look back. Take this train up the track and don't stop until you've done at least 10 miles, all right? Is who the hell are you? I'm Harry Tracy. Tracy? You are Tracy. I'm Dave Merrill. I didn't ask you what your name was. I asked you who you were. Well, I'm a painter. I come all this way to paint this countryside and famous outlaws. Just like you. You look like you could use a little warm food and a fire, Harry. Why don't you come to the cabin? Nobody calls me Harry but my mama. She's in Indiana.
Yeah. And a good one, too. Pay's not too sweet. A couple times I've had to do a little fast business to get some money. But I'll tell you something, Harry. I think the world should see a portrait of you done by me. That's what I think. Something else I'd be real honored if I could ride with you, too. Well, a little portraiture's fine. Riding with me's out. I don't want you dead. And I sure as hell don't need you. Sorry. I've come a long way, I swear. And I got nowhere else to go. You know what year it is? 1900. Well, that means that there's no more wild bunch to join up with. All that's left is tin horn politicians, government bootlickers, hired law. There's no more outlaws left, Dave. It's over. That's over. Even for portraits. None left. That actually means that there's not going to be any more Americans left. You know what else it means? You got to be a painter. Because David Merrill, you sure as hell can't cook. What are you doing? Killing my horse. You suppose that we could do another one for my mom? She's the only body I've ever been partial to in my life. She's be tickle pink. You really want to rob banks, Dave? I can't even get that right. I tried doing a job on poor old Blackjack Ketchum. And they weighted his feet down so bad that they tore his head clean off his shoulders. I'd take it over there. Could be mighty bleak. David Merrill, you are pretty damn good. One hell of a painter. Well, it appears as though you'll be riding out pretty soon, Harry. And we should think about taking me along. I'd like to ride with you. I'm a good hand. Yeah. You damn near married your hand this winter. Probably why you can't hardly see. No, wait a minute. I can see as good as you, and you know it. Oh, really? You ever raise a bank? Raise a bank? Sure. A couple. You better not eat that. That's a pure bull, and you know it. But the only thing you have raised in your life was your pants. Surely the mold on the muffin. Any man so desperate to be an outlaw, there ain't hardly none left. There's a hand up. Besides, you ain't got much of a future as a painter. You said so yourself. You'll make a pathetic outlaw. But I'll be there. <laughs> okay. Yes. 
engineer drive the train, I had a chance to spend it. <laughs> Over there. Take my boots. Come on. This way. Stand. Uh, you gotta hurry take up. around there behind the horse. Hurry. Go. Just go on over there. Come on, boy. Let's go. I can't continue to tolerate this kind of rat hole incompetence. No way. Word's going to get around. Wasn't my fault some fool pulled the emergency switch. Wait a minute. Wasn't my personal doing. Forgive me. But there is one good thing about banks. They ain't moving when you're robbing them.
everybody is here is a raid. Don't nobody move nothing, no how. You've really got impeccable grammar, you know that. For goodness sake, you can't rob my bank. This is the 20th century. I'm Harry Tracy. This is Dave Merrill. I presume that you're the manager, is that correct? Yes. Uh, we're not actually robbing your bank. We're making what you might refer to as a forced withdrawal. But we haven't been robbed since 87. Well, don't you think it's time you were? Don't you want to make a few headlines? Huh? You know what this is right here? Nitroglycerin! And there's enough in this little vial that I have here to blow us all, him and me and my pal Dave here and all of you fine progressive folks from here to smithereens. Oh, no. <laughs> Make a wish. My God, a motor came up. Chef, we could look from Halifax and not find sign of those two. Little wonder that Tracy knows all there is to know about running. But what if he should come back? You know, I got the mine payrolls coming in at the end of the week. Bertram, he'll be out of the territory by tomorrow morning. He'll be in Utah or Colorado, just as far away as he can get. That's a good watchdog. Yeah, he earned your reward there. Come on, let's go for a walk. Now, boy. Oh, Lord. It's them. But sure, somebody looking going to come back here again. That shows you what he knows. Oh, I'm ready for you this time. You better not try anything. He's vicious. Sick him. Sick him, scamp. Turn the pieces. his day off for viciousness, huh? Oh, no siree. You're not going to fool me with that. Sir, I would never be fooled you, would I? Not again. Not on this day. actually on the way.
States Marshal. Boy, Nathan, I heard of him. He's supposed to be kind of a mean fellow, isn't he? What are you gonna do? Kill him? Worse. I might have known it would be you. And who's the laughing hyena you got with you? <laughs> you better shut your mouth, law man, because if I put some holes in you, you're going to sink quicker. Word I get is you've been busy lately. That the way of it? No, not really. Actually, Dave and I were just kind of passing by. I figured that we'd uh, pay you a visit, <laughs> you know? Use the old facility. <laughs> Especially as how I recollect a few months back you tried to freeze me out, Maury. Of course, standing here uh, up to your waist in your own poo. <laughs> Ain't quite the same as being froze out, but it'll have to do until the next time. The next time will be when I catch you, Tracy, because I swear I will. Well, I'll tell you something. I ain't never seen a dead lawman catch anything but flies. My... Do you ever do anything like that when you're with me again? You understand that? I never drew down on a man in my life unless he had a fair chance. Now put that in your holster. Put it away. Now tell me something. How is it that uh, whenever a body needs a photographer, they never seem to be around? <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, what do you think? Well, now, Harry, somehow I thought it'd be a little bit bigger. Bigger? What the hell's the matter with you, boy? Where do you get to Portland? They got banks and trains there, too, and they got a young lady with a smile. People are thinking Harry Tracy's asking where she lives. Try the phone company. It's in their books. Would you like to write down, sir? No, no. Go ahead. If you have the phone number, they'll give you the address. If you have the address, they'll give you the phone number. If you don't have either one, they ain't gonna give you either one. Is that a Bank in Belfu, South Dakota on Saturday, making off over 8,000 in car currency. What's it say about me? What did it say? 
Neither one of us was there. What's the matter with you? Well, I held that bank up. It's Curry. Three years ago. All right, but isn't this how you get famous? Isn't this how you get written no, up? No, it isn't. And I'm sick and tired of people doing this to me, saying that I did things where I never was. I'm going to stop it. What if Catherine heard something like this? What's she supposed to think? Ah! Officer? Uh, you don't know a good lawyer in town, do you? Certainly, sir. Raymond Milhouse. He's the best in the state. Where's he at? He's just down the street. Big Bay Window is his office. Yeah, some people say he's going to be our next governor. Thank you. Now then, just what is it you wish me to do about this, Mr. Tracy? I want you to write out a sworn statement that I'm sitting right here in your office in this chair this morning so as they'll all know that there's no way that I could have been the one that raised that bank back in Dakota. Then I want you to take the statement down to the newspaper and make sure that they print it. And you can say that I was holding a gun on you if you want. Oh, but uh, you're not holding a gun on me, are you, Mr. Tracy? Well, now, that could be arranged, Beagle. I'm uh, taking a risk coming here to you. But then uh, I'm not running for governor, am I? Folks around here are saying that Raymond Milhouse is going to be the next governor. A policeman told me that down the street. Need publicity? Need money? How much? Well, there's a risk. And the matter of compromising my principles. The cost would be uh, considerable. Tell me, is your reputation worth that much to you, Mr. Tracy? My reputation to me is worth everything. And I might add a hell of a lot more than yours will ever be to you. Now you just tell me how much. 10,000. You asking me for ten thousand dollars? Ten thousand dollars. I don't have ten thousand dollars. I got about uh, six, sixty-five hundred. Dave, loan me thirty-five hundred dollars. Hell no! Now here I am, not getting involved in a fool play like this. Now I like to see my name in the papers. Don't matter to me whether I raise that bank or not. No. Ten thousand, Mr. Tracy. Or we have nothing more to talk about. Get your pen out. Start swearing out the statement. I'll go down and borrow the money. Could you give me a little bit more? That'll go in. Get in. Side of the street, I'll meet you at the lawyer's office. Put the money away, hide it.
was just uh, chasing after the trolley. Yeah, I was. Uh, on my way to make a deposit. That's him! That's Harry Tracy! Tell it to the judge. You are hereby sentenced to 20 years confinement in the state penitentiary. David Felix Merrill, you are duly sentenced to 13 years in the same institution. Did you hear, Mr. Tracy? Yes, sir, I heard you. I heard every word you said. I want you to know it was my fault that we got caught. It wasn't this man. And I would also like you to know that it doesn't matter whether you lock me up for one day or 20 years. Exactly the same to me. Sands are not doing much painting anymore. Have you noticed? You haven't noticed. You know why, you son of a bitch? Because of the county you have in here! You are really pathetic, David. Hey, hey! Yours is coming!
Very good, down there. Oh, yeah. I don't get the smell off anymore. Yeah, you did it to me good, Harry. Go around here? I was out here in business and I heard that nobody come to visit you for a while and I just thought I'd pop in and pay a little social call. Looks like uh, you've been doing quite a bit of popping. A lot of muffins. A couple of LBs there you've stored down there. Uh... Well, that's because I haven't had you to chase around for the last two years, Harry. Starting to look a little bit like an impregnated woman there, Mark. Let me think. I'm told you've been acting a bit like a woman yourself lately. Haven't tried to break once. Come on, break, Maury. I reckon you'll be the first to know. Yeah, I know if I'm running, too. And this time I ain't gonna let up until I kill you. Maury. Pretty big word for you, kill. You better be able to back up what you say. You know what I think, Maury? I think you better make a wish. shotgun will have live shells in them. That way, once we get in the yard, you and me can drop down. My men will get a clear shot at Tracy. All right. Just so as your men know which side I'm on. Sure. And I get a pardon. I get a full pardon. It's already been arranged with the new governor. I got my word. Teach him to run.
Slinky. I need you all the time. What the hell is the matter with you, man? We don't do things like that. with banknotes. Then invite me a banker over to dinner and watch him choke when he comes through the door. God, that would be worse to him than painting the place with his own blood. Where did you get the money? Of course, I stopped at the post office yesterday. You gotta have walk around money nowadays. It sure as hell ain't like uh, the old days. Escape with another man. Where is he now? Dave Merrill. Yeah, he's uh, a few miles from here in the graveyard. He's dead. <laughs> he's a pretty marginal fellow, Dave is, but uh, he ain't dead. You know, graveyard's a good place to hide out because they never look there figuring that they're going to find anything alive. The men are coming. Get in the house. <laughs> to enter our home this way. Please leave at once. Well, if you're not hiding him, I'm sure he won't mind us looking around a bit. He's absolutely right, Mother. We have nothing to hide, Marshal. You're welcome to look. Here, 
Cut the wire, son. Get on down here. What do you think? I think you ought to button your fly. You can go ahead and put these clothes on if you'd like to, son. But I wouldn't recommend it. Why don't you take your wagon and go on home? And when you get there, you tell your folks that Tracy treated you decent. Because you and I both know, boy, that uh, I could put a bullet right between them crossed eyes, couldn't I? Well, tell him, Mr. Tracy. Get up there. What the hell is she doing here? A present. Scatter gun. Nathan is sniffing around in these woods real hard. So we're gonna have to move for a couple hours. Yeah, that's real smart, isn't it? If you let me drill him when I had the chance, we wouldn't have this problem. You don't see that warden chasing us, do you? Take the blanket. Share everything. Shut up. Share everything. Yeah. Shut up. She's with me. I'll be right over here. That's real good news. <laughs> Your friend is really strange. Don't worry about him. He just shoots his mouth off when he gets scared. this? Talk about what? Remember our old friend Raymond Milhouse? The lawyer in Portland we got messed up with? I do. He's the governor now, Dave. I guess you already knew that, didn't you? Did not. Really? Did you read that? What's it say? Hmm? It says you betrayed me, Dave. That's what it says. 
you made a deal with the warden to get me killed and save your life. That's why both you and the warden panicked when I went for the rifle instead of the scattergun. That's also why you shot him before he had a chance to open his mouth. Oh, hell. It's your fault we got put in prison, Harry. It's your fault. You lost your nerve in that bank raid. I never lost my nerve. I was chasing after Catherine. You know it. She was on a trolley. I was trying to catch up to it. What the hell's the matter with you? You never had any respect for me as a man, Harry, or as a talent. Ever. You don't have any talent, Dave. People with talent got guts. You got guts? And turn around and walk ten paces that way. I'll walk ten paces this way. We'll turn around and fire. Fair enough? Well, you're such a gentleman. How about seven? Well, what about one, Dave? Would that be a little better? Oh, it's loaded, believe me. Not like the one back at the pen. Count them off. You're not even fit to be an outlaw. Count them off. One, two, three. Hey! No! You all right? Catherine, are you all right? We gotta still move for a couple hours before we can bed down. Can you do it? You gotta do it, Catherine. Come on, pick it up. Come on, just pick up the stuff. Get us get four or five steps before we try something like that. Is that a <sighs> Somebody lift that blanket off his face so I can get a true likeness of this historic occurrence. America will want to know.
starting to break me down. There's 150 men on the shore every day and more coming all the time. Please, please go home. we took an oath that if any one of us were ever trapped or wounded and couldn't see our way out, we'd do it ourselves. Never let the law. Not many of them kept their vow. But I can tell you right now, Catherine, that I'm going to keep mine. They're never going to take me. Never. They're never going to find you. We're going to go someplace safe. <laughs> My men disappeared like a puff of smoke. Goddamnest thing I ever saw. Done. I'm Harry Tracy. This is Catherine. Good afternoon. Close. We'll move on along if you're worried about the danger, but uh, we sure could use a meal. Now we insist on paying. Well, I don't think the paying is much. I read about you in here all the time. Possibly I must have read a hundred times already. Oh, look at this. Three banks and a train all in one day. <laughs> Son, I never did anything like that. Didn't your pa tell you that uh, some of them stories in there ain't always 100% uh, true? Now, look here at the picture here. Now, look at me. Come on. Ain't I better looking than his? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm Eli Porter. How do you meet my wife, Helen? My boy, Matt, and my girl, Glendwin. You're welcome to hey, sit man. with us, sir. We won't have any talk paying for the food. What we have comes from the soil. Uh, uh, won't you come in? You'll be wanting to wash up. We both like to wash. You children stay outside till I say. No, no, ma'am, that's okay. Let them come on in. We're gonna move right along as soon as we finish eating. So it's not cause you any problem. Every couple of days a new crowd comes busting through here. They're asking for seeing you. Puffing and blowing about how dangerous you are to every man, woman, and child. It's a lot of lie after me. More than I've ever known. We won't. Well, will we, Pa? No, son. That'll be red. That's between you and the bank and the railroad. They never did anything for folks like us. I never will, Eli. They will never do anything for folks like you. Catherine, these are pretty much worn, but at least you'll have a change of clothes. Oh, thank you very much. Good luck to you, Harry. You've been very kind to us. Thank you. Sporty? You know what that is? Yes, sir. What is it? A bullet. And where does it go? In your gun. Very good. You want it? Yes, sir. Well, 
don't ever say it. Harry Tracy never give you nothing, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Y'all make a wish now. They'll be expecting us to go either into Canada or to the roost. Nathan and his Indian, we gotta worry about. The governor will be trying to scrounge out every layabout and glory secret he can find. They're more suited to shoot each other and cows than they are at us. Are you the expert? North or east? What do you think? I don't know. Let's don't do either. Let's go northwest. Beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, it always prepared me for the water. Everything it does. Tell me something, Captain. When you were a boy, did you always dream working on boats like this? Come to think of it, I suppose I did. How about you? I dreamed of being an outlaw. Yes, sir. I dreamed of being an outlaw.
wonderful day. Marco, we enjoyed having you. You take care of each other now. But I sure as hell ain't free. How are you? Fine. This year patch, we thought, uh, probably was wild. We didn't see a house around or anything, so... Well, it was last year when I bought the place, but... Would you be here at Tracy? All day. This is Catherine. Uh, my name's Eddie Hoyt. Uh, Pleased to meet you, Eddie. Uh, shake my gun. Yes, sir, Eddie, it looks to me like you got the makings of a real fine place here. Appears to me like you've done a hell of a lot of work for a man all by himself. Talk me. What, with that barn and all? No, I was hoping to finish that barn this summer. Ran out of money. I'll we'll have to wait the spring now. What? Well, we've got plenty of money. We'd be glad to give you enough to make sure you can get it finished. Oh, I couldn't do that. You don't know me from a flat rock. You got no call to be helping me out in that fashion. No, I couldn't do that. We got no earthly use for the city. We're actually getting a little tired of dragging on all over the countryside with us, too. See here. Cheers. Come on. You sure? I'm sure. Cheers. And I tell you what we're gonna do, Catherine and I. We're gonna stay here and help you. Until you got that barn licked. How's that? All you gotta do is uh, keep us in food. Real good coffee. And I promise, no matter what, you will tell no one where we are. Fair enough? Golly, I, I wouldn't do that. No, sir. Good man, Eddie. What do you think, Catherine? Is that all right with you? Yes. Get going, boy. I think we can trust him. I mean, he is trusting us with his place while he goes off. I love you, Harry Tracy. Scoundrel and bad man. An old round imposter. We have fooled him for quite a while, haven't we? I love you too, Catherine Tuttle. Shameless consort of desperados. First thing in the morning, we're going to put some clothes on that barn. How's that? Mighty fine.
Look out there for a minute. Don't turn around, but there's a bunch of men coming up behind us right now. And they got me surrounded. Oh, I thought I didn't do it. I don't know. What? I know you didn't do it. I know you didn't say anything. I'm gonna go down real slow. I want you to come after me slow. No panic. When we get on the ground, you're to grab Catherine and take her into the shed and keep her there. And you must promise me, you must keep her there until all the shooting is over. You can do that. It's a promise. Let me go first. Hammer, keep hammering.
I can't stop those morons shooting. But if you can talk them out of that field, I can likely keep them alive. That isn't what he wants. Even you must understand what he's doing, Marshal. I'm here. Make a wish. Hold it. Hold it! That's good.
the end of time, you'll still be mine, and I'll be here with you. My love for you is as wild and true. Like the light above shall shine eternally.